What's up everybody? Um, so we're uh, digging into the Buell today. I got some injectors from my buddy Mike. Thanks again, Mike, um, that uh, we're going to replace today or attempt to replace today, at least get started on it. Um, I've already got the uh, intake horn taken off, etc. cetera. And um, the air cleaner assembly, blah, blah, blah. We're kind of just digging in. I did want to take the opportunity to show um, that one viewer who was curious about how I routed the hoses up here in one of the other videos. I talked about it and tried to show y'all. Well, this is the top section. So basically it's just um, the PCV. I can't remember what this is actually called by Buell, but that thing and that thing, that vent crankcase pressure into the atmosphere or back into the intake as it were, um, is now routed to the atmosphere as I want it to be. And basically it's just some fuel lines, some gates, actually it's transmission lines, all I could find in that size, which is great because it can withstand a lot of uh, abuse. Um, so anyways, just goes into a plastic T, one of those universal plastic T's and right down to where it vents out. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Got some zip ties to secure it all together. That's it. So highly recommend doing that. So one of the other things too is I recognize this thing. I didn't do that. So it's got a pinched off um, tube here. I don't know what that went to. I have no clue. Um, not familiar enough with Buells to be like, yeah, that's what that is. I don't know what that is. And it's dry rotted. And uh, that that is likely causing some additional air to get into the intake and could be causing some, I don't know, like extra fuel to get dumped, right? The, the, the computer can compensate for that, but it may be causing some issues that I wasn't aware of. So I'll go run, make a parts store run and buy one of those assorted um, cap sets, rubber cap sets, and, and plug that off. Um, zip tie that cap on so it's it's permanently on there. Of course, you know, that'll that'll dry rot too, as we all know, but it is what it is. Um, some of that sludge is bothering me. I'm going to do something about it right now on air, live action. All right, so another thing we got to do is bleed off the injector pressure. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. What I've done is unplug the uh, fuel pump and... Uh, I'm probably going to get a, a code because I have the air, oh, I forget what this is called. Dang it. Well, a sensor that goes into the intake here. Air intake sensor. I don't remember what they call it. Anyways, um, I'm feeling pretty groggy today. Probably the worst day to, to do this, but, you know, we're just going to go for it. How many of you saw that coming? <laughs> I got my my internal wires across. I told you I was groggy today. All right. All right, let's see. And try one more time. All right, that's it. So we're we're good to go there. Shouldn't have any internal pressure in the system now. And uh Whew, that stinks. Uh, there was some brake fluid in there. So just a little bit from when I cleaned out the throttle body. So, uh, yeah. We should be in good, uh, good shape there. All right, so let me go ahead and unclip the fuel lines and we got to take off TPS wire here and anything else that might be in the way. Uh, I'm not sure. We might end up having to take off the coil wire, the O2, the, uh, what is it? The head temp sensor. May have to take that off too, um, just to get more clearance and access down in there. And there's some clips. 
we might be able to wrestle everything free. Um, but you know, as with anything in a deal, we will see, we will see. All right, I got my mechanical fingernail here and uh, I'm gonna try and remove the fuel line without breaking this brittle plastic. Actually, oh, it's the opposite. I'm trying to pull it, dang it, I'm glad I caught that. Um, so this one, you, there's a little red, hold on. There's a little red tab and all you do is push in on it. And of course this is in the way now. So let's take this out and see that's all that is. It's just a basic valve. Let's take this out. That's good. Got a little bit of fuel in my hand, but no big deal. It'll clean it, right? We'll just kind of set this back and out of the way here and uh, you know, get a little better shot at what I'm looking at from my angle. So let me get back to work and um, yeah, we'll move forward. Oh, real quick. So as you can see, hopefully I'm just, it's very slight pressure to uh, release that off of the fuel rail. Very, very, very light pressure, no big deal. That's the O2 sensor. Here's the head temp sensor there. Boy, this stuff is, you can tell it's been through about a gazillion heat cycles. It's, uh, and some high heat cycles, you know, an air-cooled engine and tightly contained like the Buells are. Yeah, that's some, these things see some abuse. Dang it, oh, that's pretty tight. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that out. Um, and I'm talking about the coil, the coil plug over here. Um, some of y'all have done this before might be thinking, oh, dude, there's an easier way. You're probably right. But you know what? We're going to do it this way. All right, I'm just going to stuff these into a crevice. Or hopefully it'll stay out of my way. Probably not. Here's yet another connector. Uh, that is electric taped. The electric tape all around it. And that is not at all suspicious, is it? That doesn't give me a warm fuzzy at all. Man, you know, Used bikes, y'all. Let me get my knife. Yeah, that's why. So the the locking tab, actually both of them are broken off. <sighs> well, the rest of it seems to be okay, so whatever. All right, so let's, of course, there's an Allen down in there. The fuel rail is secured with. This will be fun. You can tell already. This is going to be great. I'm only guessing now what size that is.
A few moments later. All right, let's see if that made a difference at all. Probably not. We'll see. If I knock the camera, you'll forgive me. Oh yeah, this is a lot better. Yeah, that's it. There is a reason a lot of uh, Buell riders, mechanics, enthusiasts talk about doing a, an engine rotation um, and getting stuff done a lot faster by doing that. And that's where you basically split the engine from the, the frame and uh, the whole bottom end kind of comes down and you do what you got to do. and. Uh, Save yourself a lot of finicky work like this. Um, and that's, that's not something I've done yet, so I can't speak to it. Maybe it is better. Um, they swear by it. Um, maybe, you know, the day will come when this engine comes out. I mean, that, this engine's worn out, y'all. It's, I got a cylinder head leak back here. It's minor, but it's still there, which means, you know, it ain't gonna heal itself, that's for sure. Um, I'm getting more blow-by. As you can see, there's a lot of slobber around that back cylinder head. The front one's pretty clean, but this back cylinder, it's it's undergone some heat, you know? I mean, it's had a rough life back there. And I don't know what the other owner or owners did to this bike. I mean, obviously there's some crap that happened. I mean, we got pinched off hoses and cracked fittings and parts missing and crap testing wiring. The, I mean, this just layer cake of, of stuff I've dealt with on this bike throughout its, since, my, since I've owned it. All right, there it is. So this engine will have to come out and either I find another used Buell motor and rebuild that and then do a swap or I just stick with this one and tear it fully down. Um, I'd rather do the latter. I'd rather stick with this engine, pull it out, tear it down and, and rebuild it. Um, I don't want two Buell motors laying around. I guess maybe some people would say, why not? I don't know. I guess I'm just weird, but anyways, that's, that's what we're going to do. The engine, meaning the engine will come out at some point and uh, I will be rebuilding it at some point. Either this engine or another one. Uh, hopefully not terribly soon. I'm just unplugging the uh, injector plugs right now. The wires. There, done. There we go. Now that's completely out of the way. All right. And then we got, let me get my screwdriver where we laid that thing. And I think this, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So there's just some little clips down here. And I'll, once I get one out, if I can get it out. So it's just a clip. Make sure I got it in frame for you. Oh, whoops, uh, there we go. So that's the clip. Just use a flathead, pull that out. I got a, a 
pile of parts amassing behind me on my bench over here. This one's a little bit tighter. It's got the, the throttle uh, in the way. Dang, that's that's tight. All right, got it. I got it. I got it. Don't drop. Don't drop. All right. Whew. You know how that feels, right? I was barely holding on to that. So that's the other one. I don't know how I'm gonna get these back in. Jeez. You know, that I'm looking at, I probably should have just pulled the whole fuel rail out as one unit. That's what I should have done. I'm an idiot. Oh, well, whatever. Clean. Looks okay. Let's get those injectors out. I fully expect these to be tight, which is, whoo, yeah, oh man, Mike, if you see this video, yeah, those are pretty dirty, I gotta remember, this gray one goes to the back, the red one goes to the front, dang, that's, uh, that's dirty, Yeah, very. Yeah, that's got a lot of crud that's just caked up on there. And who knows what's in that. So a lot of times, not, well, in most cases, there's a screen, a very small screen down in there. And I'm sure there's some crap that's been collecting. Now the tip on this one doesn't look terribly bad. Of course, you know, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be so but this it's pretty dirty um nonetheless we're gonna get this all cleaned out and uh get the new injectors in there i do have to make a parts run i gotta get that nipple i want to get that done before i start putting everything back together so we're gonna pause the video and we'll come back with putting it all in all right guys we're back um we're gonna get moving on this again I did get a, a cap to put on there and I'm going to zip tie it just to make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Probably not necessary, but you know, stuff happens. It just does. It's a fact of life. Life is full of stuff and it happens. Uh, I only got one size zip tie, so whatever, leave me alone. Right. That's never going to leak again. All right. Let's do a quick clean up down there. Uh, I got some carb cleaner while I was at the parts store. And um, I'm going to spray down there and just kind of sanitize the area. And um, one thing I forgot to buy was You gotta get your nose down there and take a good whiff of it. Now I'm just peeking out. I'm gonna get my flashlight and take a peek down in there and 
See how much trash is in the injector bore. And no, they're clean. That's good. Glad to see that. And looking at the intake, uh, no indication that the intake is leaking. That's good. All right, next thing we gotta do is figure out if we're gonna assemble this fuel rail with the injectors connected to the fuel rail first, which is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, or if it'd be easier to stick everything down in there. Let me clean off this fuel rail. It's, it's, not, it's not terribly dirty, it's just got schmutz on it. Let me just give it a quick spritz. Let that carb cleaner just moisturize the old hand. Woohoo! Got a little nick in the skin right there. You know that feeling. All right. I am going to wipe just a little bit of grease on the new injector o rings to make it a little easier to slide these on. And I mean, that's a lot, but there's only going to be like, that's it. I mean, just. Just a skin, right? Just to just to make it a little easier. There, there is injector O-ring grease you can use. I think it's a white lithium base. Um, you can also use Vaseline. I don't have either of those. I would have done it, but I don't have them, so it is what it is. But you don't want to go crazy with the grease. I do know that. Um, even with the uh, appropriate greases you can use, you just you just want to avoid going crazy with it. So. All right, don't ask me why. I just know that from being told that years and years ago, don't go crazy with the grease. So, and some may think, feel like, well, no, that's not necessary. I, uh, so I, this ain't my first injector job. I can tell you that. And um, I don't know about these fuels, uh, about how difficult it can, it can be to get the the uh, O-rings to go, you know, to seat into the uh, injector rail easily, but I have dealt with, you know, larger vehicles, V8s and V6s and vehicles that have injectors in them and rotaries too. I'm a rotary guy, love rotaries, um, but they, they can be rather difficult. So let's find out. So this is the rear and the harness connects that away, so it'll be oriented. Can you all see that? Whatever, all right, whatever. We're just gonna, yeah, see. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. All right, gonna get these seated. And that's how the clip goes on, like so. There's a groove. Yeah, hopefully y'all can see that. There's a groove right there and that clip goes into that groove. And what it does is prevents the injector from going too far down. So it just kind of holds it in a single place. And that's it, that's it you guys. So it also locks in, there's a, also a, a ring around the fuel rail and uh, locks everything in. Now the injectors can still twist and move around as they need to. So it's not gonna restrict it that way. All right, so now what we're gonna do is plug everything in and then get, do everything in reverse order at this point. Now let's see if I can do this without dropping stuff. Oh yeah, this is gonna be no big deal. Everything's just going in together pretty straightforward. Just a little bit of pressure and we're in so all right so i won't bore y'all with all the rest of the reassembly i'm just going to kind of get everything tightened up and uh we'll come back at the end when we're starting the bike up again
One Eternity Later. thousand years later all right guys so after about 45 minutes of struggling and then a little league baseball game i got some time to kind of think about what i needed to do and uh you know sometimes you just gotta walk away and uh this is what i ended up doing so i looped a zip, zip tie through it and I used some longer needle nose pliers, some angled needle, needle nose pliers, and uh, we are in business. That thing's, you know, <laughs> whatever coating was on those two nubs there, it's gone. It is what it is, though. Um, at least it's not exposed directly to the elements and whatever, but I got it on there. We're, we're in good shape. That was... Uh, no fun. So now I'm just going to snip that and uh, get the rest of this buttoned up. And we'll, we'll circle back whenever uh, I'm uh, getting ready to start the bike up. I also, um, so we're getting really close. I, I thought I'd share a couple things. One, um, this is what you have to plug off whenever you bypass the crankcase ventilation system away from the air box. Um, so all that is is just a piece of vacuum hose shove down in both of those those uh holes that's it it's real straightforward plugs it up all good um and it's airtight so that took some serious force to get that in so it's not coming out anytime soon um you could probably do some like epoxy and plug that up that way um but this is fine you know and it doesn't it's not obtrusive or anything like that it doesn't seem to affect anything in terms of performance the other thing i wanted to show y'all was um, a trick I got from NCCR, and uh, they they show a much easier way of getting the air box lid back on over the air horn, and it just involves this piece of wire. Very cool. Uh, so 
I'm just going to share it with you all just in case you're not aware of NCCR. Um, they are a Swedish company that does a lot of Buell stuff. They make some amazing, amazing parts that are well outside of my <laughs> price range. But um, they have some awesome, really good, good videos, instruction, very instructional videos. So, but whatever. All right, let's hope I got everything in there right and that this works. I've done this before and it was pretty good. So basically, as you can see, I'm just pulling on this wire and oops, a little bit too much oomph on that. So pull on the wire and it should theoretically get you in place in terms of the air horn going over the top. So let's see. Definitely having more trouble this time. I may have missed a step and that may be why I'm having more trouble, but no, it's okay. We are in business. There you go. That's it. So piece of wire, air horn, air box, Bob's your uncle. We're good. We're done. So that's, that's frankly much easier than the way I was doing it before. So I highly suggest you using that method. And at this point, we're just putting some Torx bolts back in and, uh, Picking up the fuel pump and starting it up. All right. Okay, that's just the probably some air in the fuel.
probably saw me fiddling with the uh, air cleaner. It was up and over this lip on this side. So we're good now. It was a good thing I caught that. So yeah, at this point, just gonna put everything back, button it all up. And uh, we're in good shape, guys. Uh, we have successfully replaced the injectors. And um, yeah, check for, you know, leaks, etc. cetera. We're, we're in good shape. Everything's seems to be uh, looking good in there. So no leaks, nothing, nothing odd. The throttle isn't sticking or anything like that. So we didn't bind up anything there. Yeah. Anyways, that's it guys. So appreciate y'all tuning in. Hopefully you can hear me over the, the fan blowing and trying to get the fumes out of the garage. But uh, again, thank you all for tuning in. Um, until next time, keep it between the ditches and peace out.